Well, here we go with the budget 2024, the great British ISA, the changes there. We're going to update you guys. A lot of you guys who watch my videos are UK investors, and I know a lot of you love your ISAs, and there's a big change to the ISA, so we're going to talk about that. But first of all, the budget 2024, surprises, not really that many in there. There wasn't that many surprises. The big headline that everyone kind of went with was the news on the national insurance. The national insurance went down from 10% to 8%. I think this was worked out by the Chancellor of saving an average of £450 or something like that. That's the kind of big thing they are rolling out ready for the general election, which probably will be towards November time is my guess. And the big thing is going, hey, look, we saved you more money on your tax by cutting the national insurance. Really, in my opinion, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, if you are going to have a bit more money in your back pocket, that's obviously good and it is a bit of an improvement. But ultimately, cutting the national insurance isn't a major deal when you look at wage inflation. Wage inflation has gone up massively in the last couple of years because inflation's gone crazy. So there's more money to tax overall. So even though they're saving you money, the government itself is taking more tax because of wage inv inflation because of how much wages have gone up. I think ultimately what everyone kind of wanted was an increase in personal allowances. Uh, we haven't seen a big increase in personal allowance since 2018, 2019, when we saw the jump from 11,850 up to 12,500. That would be more in your back pocket if we saw something equivalent to that. But we've not seen the personal allowance gone up for a while and uh, that would have been a lot more in the back pocket. And that's what we were kind of hoping for and we didn't get. So probably not what everyone kind of wanted there was the main headline that was going on with the budget this time round. Um, but getting on to what probably affects me and you the most is probably looking at the ISA, the Great British ISA and the changes that were made into the ISAs. So I'm sure most of you guys are aware, stocks and shares ISA, you are allowed to invest 20,000 a year into the stocks and shares ISA and anything that you sell in that ISA does not have to go to tax. So you keep more in your back pocket. It's an amazing feature that we have in the UK that not everyone knows about. And if you are buying stocks and shares, you probably should be buying things in an ISA to get that tax-free allowance into your account. Now the big change is that they have now increased it to 5,000. So you now have your 20,000 that you've had previously and you are going to get an extra 5,000 on top of that. I think the big misconception that I've seen in the last 24 hours is people think that there's the normal ISA and the British ISA and you can only either have a normal ISA or a British ISA. They're the same thing guys. So your normal ISA is now going to get increased from 20,000 up to 25,000. However, the 5,000 that has been increased by, that 5,000 can only go to UK assets. Yes, <laughs> a little bit confusing there. So in theory, you could have 20,000 internationally in the US and the other 5,000 has to be in the UK. Now you could have more in the UK, you could have 7,000 in the UK and 18,000 internationally, but the last 5,000 that it's getting increased by has to be in the UK and that is a change that has been made. Now, the reason why is it seems like Jeremy Hunt thinks that this is going to help UK firms and investments into UK firms. I'm not too sure about it because obviously this mostly applies to people that use ICES and retail investors. So an extra 5,000 for me and you investing in some of these UK businesses probably isn't going to make a major difference, but hey, it's at least something in the right direction. It's better than not getting nothing, which is what we've had for many years now. If you look at previously the ISA allowances that we have had, 20,000 has been the limit for a long time. If you look through here, 2023, 2022, 21, 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016 is the last time you have to go back to when we had an increase in the ISA allowance. So it is about time we have one. I think the big thing is that we didn't expect it to be increased by 5,000, but then it would only be allowed to go into UK assets. And I've got to say, there's many other things that I think would have helped generate better investments for shareholders and investors. An example is the current corporation tax. Obviously, if businesses had more profitability, they would be more attractive to international investors. They're making more profit, they return more to shareholders. I think the big thing if they want investments to do well is not by getting us retail investors to, I, I don't mind having an increase by 5,000, 100%, but I think attracting the bigger money is more important and obviously one thing is maybe support UK businesses more. And the other thing is like when you look at the corporation tax and the increase that's just happened there, less corporation in 
increasing tax, more profitability, more return to shareholders, more appealing to international investors and the big money. That's probably more important for the UK government to be focusing in on right right now is actually supporting the businesses to get the big money in. I think that's probably more important. I think we would all agree. I think ultimately we would prefer to have a ISA that was just open to whatever we wanted to invest in, not that 5,000 extra that had to be in UK assets. Another thing is potentially getting rid of the stamp duty on tax. That could have been a little bit more of a better approach. And ultimately, I think it would have been best for the actual ISA allowance to actually have a new rule put in that your ISA allowance moves up with inflation. That's personally what I think is ultimately the best option, is that we just have the ISA actually moved up in line with inflation. And then there's no issues there. I think that's, that. if I if it was down to me, that would be what I would do uh, for us retail investors. But 20,000 is still a lot, you know, that's still a lot of money that for us to invest in and 25,000 now, even if you're not a big fan of UK companies, is still a relatively good amount of tax-free allowance for us to get out there. Now, I guess one of the negatives out there is that I've seen a lot of people going, well, I don't actually really want to buy into any UK equities. You know, they're not as good performing as other equities out there, which is understandable. Now, I would, and it's a different subject for another day, I would argue there's a lot of good equities out there that you could potentially buy. But a lot of people don't like buying into you into the uk market which is fair enough and I, I can understand that and i guess this is where the negative from the change in the ice has come today is that obviously five thousand has to be the new five thousand has to be in to uk equity so the big thing and the confusing thing today is how this is now going to be regulated because i don't know how the uk government is going to regulate that that five thousand is in uk assets in your in your ISA account you yourself have to manage that you are have only put that extra 5,000. If you do match your ISA route, if you do match your ISA route, you've got to manage that that 5,000 has gone into UK assets. And then the changes from an investing broker, like Trading212, Hargreaves Lansdowne, how are they going to put those changes in place that limit you after a certain point, after it goes up, oh, actually you've maxed out now the amount of international assets you can put in your ISA, the rest of it has to be UK assets. How they're going to manage it so some of the things of how this is going to be regulated is quite confusing, which was my, my big worry of what I saw today is the, the, how this is now going to be regulated from my point of view, the government's point of view and your broker's point of view. I thought that's going to be a bit of a headache that's being created by the government today. That is one issue that I saw with this change into the ISA. The other thing, and I saw everyone kind of way uh, already trying to find like a few cracks in this and trying to find ways of getting back into the international market is that I saw a few people go, okay, I can't buy international assets with that last 5,000 now, that 25,000 that I have, that allowance. So I'll go buy a UK asset that is exposed to US assets. So I saw a few, few people already going, hey, I'm gonna go buy a Scot Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust. Because when you start looking at some of their holdings, for example, they have big exposure to the likes of ASML, NVIDIA, Mercado Libra, Moderna, Amazon. I've got to say, I was looking at some of the holdings here and I was like, I've got to have another look at Scottish Mortgage. There's some decent companies there they're, they're holding this portfolio. <laughs> That's another one for the other day. But a few people going, okay, so if I can only buy UK equities with that extra 5,000, I'm going to buy Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust. Or a few people going, oh, I'm going to go buy the Vanguard S&P 500 because it's on the US, UK market. Now I have gone through the budget, which is very boring, but I did go through the uh, the actual budget here. And it actually says that in here, as you can see here, 2.7, is that it looks like investments, unit trust, our investment trust, of at least 75% of the value of investments held by the fund were alleg uh, eligible if they're invested into the, U into the UK markets. So it looks like for you guys that kind of had that light bulb moment of going, I know how to get around it, it looks like they're already kind of going to cover that, that if they don't have 75% of the investment assets in the UK, that is not going to be eligible for the ISA. So once again, it comes, it's a, a little bit of a headache. You know, it's a little bit of a headache where previously you used to go, yep, 20 grand, you can go buy anything you want with it. To hold on, you've got to make sure you've got 20 grand wherever you want, but then also making sure those five grand, that extra five grand, 5,000 that you've got, is now going into the UK only. And also that UK only asset you are buying, 75% of its value of its investments are in the UK. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, ultimately I think it's probably gonna go down to the 
brokers to kind of regulate this and make sure they limit you on the right thing, but it's gonna be a headache for them how they're gonna you know, program it all into the app. So yeah, this is obviously something that you've kind of got to be aware of and something that I think a few of you guys would kind of go in that light bulb moment, unfortunately. And that light bulb has probably been crushed and stamped on, unfortunately. But yeah, I thought I'd let you know on that. Anyway, uh, one more thing that I wanted to point out that isn't to do with ICES, but I thought was an interesting point of view that was uh, going on there, is the tax on vaping products. So they are going to start taxing vaping products. Now, they said that they were going to help tackle children uh, vaping. I was like, no, come on, let's let's be serious now. It's to make more money. And uh, they want to make money off vaping because obviously they're pushing everyone towards vaping and they don't make any, any money off it. Whereas with tobacco, um, tobacco is what they make a lot of tax on, but because they're pushing everyone on there, they're not making any more money now. So the government have to, you know, money orientated, isn't it? You've got to make that money up. So what they've done is they've pushed everyone to those products going, yeah, it's healthier. Oh, now that we are losing our tax on that, we're going to tax on the uh, vaping products, which ultimately I said that I think they'll do in the longer term. They'll push everyone to vaping products because it's at the moment statistically healthier to do. So they push everyone to the healthier, healthier products. And then they go, okay, we're losing out on money now. Let's make the money back up on the vaping. Very, very clever from the government. And I said a year ago, I think this is what they'll do and um, it's happening. I don't think we'll ever see at the moment, any, un unless something crazy happens on a health report, I don't think we'll see anything happen towards vaping in the next few years because at the moment, it's, at the, mo what the evidence says it is healthier and that's how the government will make up the loss in tobacco tax by making it up on vaping. So yeah, I, I've said that this would happen a year ago and we are starting to see the tax now on vaping products to make up from the loss in tobacco products. And that's probably why today you're seeing Supreme, for example, having a absolutely mega day because even though everyone went, oh, but now Supreme are going to get taxed, that means they're gonna lose you know, some of the profitability. Well, more than likely they'll just hike up the prices by, I think it's 2026 it comes in they'll hike up the prices to cover the tax that they have to pay. And also, if anything, it suggests that the government are long-term supporting vaping if they're willing to then add the tax in. Um, so yeah, that's why you've seen some today, a lot of like stocks that are vaping related actually having a pretty good day. So yeah, just wanted to talk about the changes in the ISA, a few confusing ones, a few things that I personally would have done differently. I, I personally would change it, the ISAs go up in line with inflation, and then we all know we're getting an increase every year, more than likely, unless we hit deflation. Um, and also, just something around the, the changes in, in vaping, and uh, I know a few of you guys have exposure in the investments into them sort of industries anyway. So I hope you enjoyed the video anyway, guys, and um, see you in a bit. Let me know what you think of the changes as well. Catch you in a bit.